In this video, I'm going to show you how to extend the Hobbit's Bitstream Analysis GUI with plugins. So here we're looking at the plugin development guide that's in the documentation that's in the source code on GitHub. Uh, but I think this video might be a nice companion to this because we can actually make some plugins and see the nitty gritty of how to implement some of these functions, if any of it is ambiguous in the documentation. So a good way to start if you're developing a plugin in Qt Creator is to install the uh, the, uh, the Hobbit's plugin wizards so that you can quickly create a plugin from a template. So we're in the root of the Hobbit's project here. We're just going to go into wizards directory. And then in here, there's a script wizard installer. And this basically just puts these four wizards into the, uh, the a location that QCreator is going to be able to find them. And then it's really easy to just quickly make a plugin from the template and you're up and running in no time. And then you can add whatever, uh, add whatever implementation specific stuff after you have all the boilerplate code in place. So let's go over to Qt Creator. Uh, so we have our Hobbits project open here. Let's start by adding an operator plugin. So we have these other operator plugins here. We can take a quick look at, um, let's take a look at the take skip operator. We can see we have all these interface methods that we've overridden so that we have a, a valid plugin implementation. And then we can see the implementations down here. Most of these methods are pretty simple, depending on the plugin. Um, here we can see we're just parsing this parameter that comes in and then applying the take skip operation onto the input bitstream. We'll make a slightly simpler, simpler plugin than this. Um, so let's here we can just add a new sub project. If our wizards installed correctly, we'll be able to see this Hobbit's plugin option when we're creating a new sub project. We want to make an operator plugin. We'll just, uh, let's call it cool plugin. And then after that wizard finishes, we can see we have cool plugin over here and a bunch of the stuff has already been made for us. So, we have the basic definitions of the functions that are required to implement the interface. And then we should be able to then just run and build with that. And we'll have a plugin that doesn't do anything, but it'll immediately be there in Hobbit. So we know, we know that the, the template worked. So if we go to Hobbit, so we got Hobbit's down here and we can see down in the operator plugins, we now have this cool plugin. Uh, we didn't do anything with it. We don't have any form for UI controls. So we we'll have to add that. Um, so let's add some implementation code to this and we'll make it do something. All right, so I added some very simple functionality to our operator plugin. Uh, in the form, I added a text box where you can type a cool message, um, but it will also accept an empty message. In can recall plugin state, which basically validates the parameters that are being passed to an operator um, operation, I'm just checking to make sure that the plugin state contains a uh, message value and that that value is a string. 
And if it's not, I'll say this isn't a valid plugin state that can be recalled. So there's a set plugin state in UI that's basically just setting, using a plugin state, setting the values of that state in the form. So in this case, it's taking the message and making sure that the, the line edit has the message in the plugin state. Um, get state from UI, which is the reverse of that, where you're getting the plugin state from the UI. Get min input, get max input containers. Those both return one because it just takes one container as an input and creates one container as an output. We probably could have made it take zero input containers because we're not actually doing anything with the input data, but that's fine. Um, so then in the operate on containers, we're just making sure that we have a valid plugin state. Otherwise we just return a null result, which is like an error if you don't have any information in the result. Uh, you pull the message out of the plugin state. If the message is empty, because it's allowed to be empty, uh, you just insert a placeholder message. And then you create your output container and then just set the bytes in that output container to the message from the text. And then you return that container with the plugin state um, as it's uh, the same the same plugin state that gets passed in. And then we return the result. Uh, so let's see how this works. We have Hobbit's running down here. We have our plugin down here. We can run it without without any uh, input. And then if we see in the ASCII, we see we get this message. Um, we can also run it with input. So so if we have this, there we go. So we can see this was with no input. This was with some input. We just get the bytes that we input it. So that's kind of a pointless um, operator plugin, but it sort of shows you how how the basics work as far as how you can set up an operator plugin that actually does something in Hobbits. All right, so now that we've added an operator plugin, let's try to add a display plugin. So we go to displays, new sub project, and add a display plugin. should give us a functioning display right off the bat. So we see a cool display project, all of the required files for a valid plugin. Yes, we are running the application and we can see we have a cool display. And the boilerplate for that uh, template includes a simple bit raster. Uh, okay, cool. So we have a functioning display plugin. Let's try to make it more interesting. So I added some basic controls and rendering to the display plugin. Um, in the controls, I added a spin box that lets you control the number of breakfasts, uh, and then a signal that will send a breakfast chain signal when there's a value changed. And then in the cool display plugin, I made it so that it connects the control widgets breakfast changed signal to the display widgets set breakfast slot. Uh, and then in the widget, we react to that here. Uh, okay, so and then the widget, we also have some, we draw something and uh, we're basically just using some of the code from the ASCII view to render some text. Uh, yeah, so let's see how this works. So we got
So we've got it running down here. Uh, we can see our display it shows Boromir. Um, and then we can combine this with our uh, operator plugin we made earlier. And then Boromir is being very pessimistic about making uh, plugins. But if we increase the breakfasts, hey, we get a nice encouraging statement from some hobbits. Um, so hopefully this will encourage you to make some cool plugins. Um, and hopefully it demonstrated how at least the initial boilerplate getting started with plugins development should be pretty straightforward. Don't hesitate to reach out to us on GitHub or Discord. Those links should be in the description below. Um, and go make some cool plugins, dude.